Hi, hi everyone. Um, in case you're wondering, the jumper I'm wearing here is my stash dive sweater. So that was at the, the start of the last lockdown, or maybe halfway through the last lockdown, it, almost a year ago, May last year, I started doing a sweater, um, a video series on YouTube, which was, it was me just pulling yarn out of my stash that I hadn't used and putting a very basic sweater shape together. And then, um, and just kind of going through the thought and design process as I was doing it. And there was actually, there was a lot of knitters came up with some beautiful knits, but it's all still there if you want to give it a shot yourself. There's, it's both on YouTube and also if you want it more of a class format, it's up as a free class on Teachable on my just stone stitches dot teachable um, web, website, site, site, I guess you'd call it. But, Today I have a few things to tell you and I'm answering, there's a question that somebody was asking me about in relation to a sweater. But the first thing I think I might talk about is our Celtic Knits Club. So as you all know, the Celtic Knits Club, it was in sale at the end of last year and in the last few weeks, most people have been getting all of their shipments um, in the post. So what everyone got in the shipment was there was four skeins of yarn, two in a lighter color and two in a darker color. There was um, a Celtic knits, there was a notebook, of course I should have taken them, they're all over here on the other side. There was a notebook, a journal from Badly Made Books and there was a couple of stitch markers from, uh, from Python Charms. So um, that was what came in the initial package. Now what I want to share with you today is some of the patterns that actually came out. So the two things that people are working on for the club are in each installment there's an accessory in this hang on let me just go up here um, in this particular case the accessory is Durica which is this hat here of course the funny thing is I took it home to take photographs and I'm out doing the photographs and realized that um, I had forgotten to attach the pom-pom so all the photographs are without the pom-pom but it works with and without um, the blankets, square squatches are brilliant. It gives you a chance to practice the pattern and feel confident starting on the hat. That's wonderful. That was kind of what I hoped for, particularly if there's new stitch patterns, because when you're just doing a little square, you can focus just on the stitches. So that was, that was the intention. So yes, this was the, this is the excess, the hat. So there's three stitches here. You've got this one here, which is a full cable. Then the middle, the other way around, middle one is the Blackberry stitch, and then the final one is Garter stitch, Ladder stitch. And what um, we just had pop up there is the fact that every project also comes with a matching blanket swatch. So it's a 10 by 10 swatch like this, that is going to be uh, a blanket square. So each of the accessories will also have swatches, 10 by 10 swatches, that will go to form six patterns um, squares in the middle of the blanket. And there on this one, it's in a darker color. So there was three different color options for the club. There's the one I just showed you, which is the, um, the contrast color. So it's kind of like a, I call it a navy. It's not really a navy. It's really kind of a deep royal blue, I think. Duke is the name of this one. Um, the other option, which was for the blue medley kit was this one here this is kirk so if you can see it here it's kind of got blues and a little bit of purple but it's also um, a darker color i don't have it here um, but the classic neutral it had a very dark almost black charcoal gray um, and that one is ghoul which is the irish for coal um, and so all of those dark colors for anyone who's working on the club the dark colors are what you're going to do the hat and you're going to do your pattern blackberry swatches with. And I also kind of had people asking me if you should start with the swatch or with the hat. And I think probably the swatch. Now I know it's knit flat, but the stitch patterns are given flat. And then you modify them a little when you go in the round because some of them are going to be very similar, but the blackberry stitch is a little bit different once you start going into the round. But you'll start recognizing the stitch, you know what it looks like from doing the, the swatch. So I think it makes it much, much easier as you're going through. Now, because it's also, like I said, a part of a blanket, there's, there was two other lighter skeins of yarn that came with it. 
So the colours that came with that were either the Nadur, which is kind of the beigey colour, which came from the classic one, Spare, which is the light blue, or Lia, um, which is the grey, which is the one that I'm knitting on. Um, and this is, no, oh, I've turned the wrong way around. Um, this is the garter stitch swatch. So it's one where you cast on two stitches at the sides, and then it's on this side, and then you work a decrease, center double decrease all the way up, and you create these really cool little garter squares. And they should be 10 by 10 square, so that by the time you're finished, you have your central sections, and then you can do a surround around the whole blanket in the garter squares. Now, each installment, people will get just a couple of skeins of this. So this one has uh, two skeins of the, uh, the neutral color, the next one will have three, and the final one will have two. So that by the time you're finished, you can have all of the garter squares. And I'm actually finding the garter squares kind of addictive. The way I kind of think of them is almost like palette cleansers. So as I'm finishing on one project and I don't really want to jump into another one, I just pick up the yarn and I do another square <laughs> with the result that I suspect that by the time I'm finished, I'm probably going to end up with more garter squares than I actually need for the project. So you might be seeing some other garter square projects in my future as, uh, as the time moves on. <laughs> so that was the first and kind of fun thing that I wanted to tell you about at the beginning of the of our little talk here today. Um, the other thing that somebody was asking me about, I don't know if you're on here, um, but we had somebody asking me to show what each of the marls, the Blaster marls look like knitting up. So hang on, let me just grab them over here. Uh, I've got a few bits going on here. So this one is a marl of quilta and ore. So it's quilta ore. And it's one strand of each of those which has been knitted or has been twisted together. So this is not completely of it because this one is the quilta and then this is the quilta or I'm just testing out a folded hand but you can see that's what the moral of the quilta or looks like knitted up. So that's the first one and the other one she'd wanted to have a look at is this one um, this is, oh, hi, I'm glad you made it on. Uh, this is Leah and Ore. So the Leah is the light gray and the Ore is the goldy color. You see these ones, it's much more subtle because the colors are closer together. And so let me put this up here. That is what these ones look like knitted up together. So it's much more subtle color. So this one is probably more suitable for if you did want to do something more heavily patterned it'll still show up really well with this. Whereas as you start going to the darker colors, it's not going to jump out so much. So that's just to give you an idea of what those look, look like knitted up. It, and you can also even test it yourself because if you've got each of the two colors, you can just knit the two together. It's going to give you a thicker one, but it'll give you an idea of how, um, of how they look. Because of course, when they're made, most of these, the blaster is two plies twisted together. Normally, if it's single color, it's two plies of the same color twisted together. The marls, they just have the two different colors and they twist them so that as you're knitting, you have the two ones kind of speckling through the whole thing, which gives it a lovely, uh, yeah, just a lovely, really deep color effect and a good way of blending colors as well if you wanted to do something with stripes and stuff like that, you know? Um, I did have, well, I'll come back to this. Somebody else was asking me about spree, the cardigan spree, which I've got behind me. Um, in terms of how you work the neck. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. But first of all, I should probably tell you about something I've launched today. I had, I've been hinting at for weeks, maybe months now at this point, about doing another masterclass. So today, the very first of the new master, sorry, not the very first, the new masterclass, it's the second one, has been launched, which is going to be our finishing techniques, our finishing your knits. And it's one where um, I, it's, I'm always a bit hesitant to kind of put too much up on finishing normally. The reason for that is it's quite personal that the most important thing with finishing is being happy with your, the end product. So what I try to do with the finishing techniques class is give a lot of different options and more importantly, talk about the end result that you're looking for so that you can kind of decide what suits you best or what's best for that particular project reaching that point. 
So if you want to learn a little bit more about the class, you can find in my profile um, just a link into the blog and there's a link into the class there. Now a little different from the last time round, I've got this one. It's going, the first lesson will be live on the 2nd of April and it's going to be a new set of videos again up every week for six weeks. So it's going to be a six week masterclass. But also what I've put down there, you'll see there's an option for a Zoom edition. So you can either get just the masterclass or you've also got the option of, um, of doing it with the Zoom. And so what the Zoom class is, is after the third, uh, yes, the third week, um, you'll get an invitation for a Zoom lesson, probably about 60 minutes where we'll have a group. And if there's specific uh, things that you want to talk about, are projects that you need some help with, you can bring them along to the Zoom or you can post me questions beforehand. So, but that's all within the masterclass itself. There's two enrollment options. Second one is only obviously going to be open for a few weeks. And when we come up to the Zoom class happening, I'm going to close that and it'll no longer be an option. But there'll be two Zoom sessions involved in that. One at the three week point and one at the five week point. So you'll have a chance of working through several of the projects and, and the classes and seeing what you'd like some extra help with or what you want to ask questions on. So, but you'll find that all in there with the link for the two of them on, on my blog. So that's all about um, my finishing your knits class. And that's why I've been so busy because doing the classes is a multi-step process because initially I record the videos, which is you know, the first step. But of course, that's kind of usually tied with planning the classes, getting any swatches I need to work on for the class put together. Then from there, kind of doing all of the actual logos and illustrations that I'm going to need. And then my son has again been working on um, doing the videos for me. So he's doing the video editing, but then I come back in and I do captions manually. So I've got a, a program that imports the text from the file and then I go through and edit it because it's never going to be exactly right. So I want to get it as close as possible. Um, what's the sweater I'm wearing? This is, I actually said it at the start of it, but I'm happy to repeat. It's, it's, it's the stash dive sweater. Um, it was a free little YouTube, uh, pattern knit along really, it, cause it's not a specific pattern, but it, there's a whole pile of information and videos on it. And it's also a free teachable class. So look for the stash dive sweater is what you're looking for. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think I've kind of pretty much finished talking about my finishing your knits class. If there's anything else in terms of the class, or if you're curious about things that are covered and things like that, just pop a question up there. Um, I'm happy to answer it. And in the meantime, I'm actually just going to tell you a little bit about Spree and hopefully the person who asked me to answer this is around and listening. Otherwise it's going to be up here for you to be able to see after the fact. Now, Spree is, um, my a sweater, it was actually a knit along sweater from, I think it was last, two years ago. It wasn't last year, it was the year before. And it's knit from the top down with the garter stitch band. And it's got this kind of punch work, um, lace, very simple lace, but it begins with this garter stitch band. So you start in the middle with the provisional cast on, you knit just this teeny tiny, I think it's five stitch wide strip all the way over to here. Then you leave those stitches just on either on waist yarn or another needle. Then you come back and undo the provisional cast on, which is from the middle of the back of the neck and you knit all the way over this direction. So then what you end up with is this big long strip of garter with live stitches on both ends. So then to actually use that garter strip, you can see all of your work begins down here. So what you're doing is you start with those five, here we go, let's turn her around. You start with those five stitches over here and then you pick up stitches all the way along the bottom of the garter sti strip. And then by the time you get to the other end, you're back to those live five stitches. So then what you've got is you've got live stitches originally from each side and picked up stitches all the way in between. And once you've got all of that, at that point, you're all ready to just work the top down. So you just set up your raglans to work the, sa the raglan increases and those garter strips, which you had started already, just keep working from that point down. And just the, the main reason it's done like that is just so it can be done seamlessly. You could, of course, also, if you wanted to, um, just start it at the beginning and then pick it up and, and, and uh, sew it on afterwards. But 
as generally, if there's a way that I can make something seamless or do it and integrate it into the knitting process, I tend to go and do that. It does often mean that it's a little bit more complex to write and it probably you kind of need to think a little bit more as you're putting it together because it's not going to be as obvious. But it means the whole lot is done when you get to the other end, which I personally think is a great advantage. So I'm, I'm always a huge fan of as seamless as possible. So I think that is most of what I have to tell you about today. Um, if you have any other questions that you want to ask me about the club or about Spree or about the, um, the new master class that I was telling you about, just post them on up because I'm going to go and make this an IGTV video again so you get a chance to go watch it or go back over it and ask me questions. So goodbye everyone and enjoy the rest of your Thursday.